Hello, I'm Graham and I hope everyone's having a great day. Welcome to today's video in which I'm hopefully going to show you one of my methods for capturing stunning landscapes. Now, when we think about landscapes, we normally think about wide angle lenses so we capture a wider vista. But the problem with using wide angle lenses is that it distorts the perspective between the foreground and the background. You'll find the foreground is much more uh, larger than in real life compared to the background, which will be very small. So if I was to take this picture with my camera was set to 17 millimeters, which is the widest angle I have today, you'll see that we've got an unnatural perspective and it doesn't give me the full vista that I particularly want in this shot. Now, the method that I use for this particular shot is one called matrix uh, panorama. And I use a matrix of five horizontal shots to three vertical shots. And I use a camera in the portrait mode and I have it set to an aspect ratio of four to three or three to two, dependent on what the output resolution and format size that I want. So in this particular case, I've got the camera set to an aspect ratio of three to two. For the process to work, when you stitch these images together in Photoshop or any other program, you need to have everything in the manual mode. So you need to have manual white balance. So today I'm gonna to set one of the presets, which is the sunny preset. You need to have manual focus, you need to have manual ISO, manual shutter speed, and manual aperture. So each of those pictures taken in this 50, uh, 5x3 matrix will all have the same exposure. Now, the secret to this is using the widest aperture you can with your 50mm lens. So in this case, it's going to be about f2.8. Uh, we select a particular point of focus, and in this particular case, it's going to be that oak tree in the background. Now the reason for selecting a fixed focus plane is that when we stitch these together the image plane that's in focus will be uh, parallel to that tree. The foreground will be slightly out of focus and maybe the background will be slightly out of focus but they'll all match together. So it gives me a true perspective on what this actual format looks like. As I said if you try to shoot this wide angle you'll find that you're getting distorted foreground to background ratio. By using a standard lens, it, the image we create is as we, our eyes see it. So you'll get a natural looking image when you combine all these together. So I'm gonna set the camera in that manual mode, get my exposure set on the first image, which I'll take of the tree, which is gonna be the central, uh, central subject in this image. I'll get my exposure from that in the automatic mode, and then I'll set those into the manual mode so that I've got a consistent exposure. So when I've done that, I'll show you how I take this picture. Right, so by using the aperture priority mode, I've determined what the exposure is for the main principal point of this uh, landscape. And it's gives me an exposure of 1 1600th of a second at f2.8 and an ISO of 100. So I've set the camera white balance to a preset uh, of uh, sunny. I'm going to turn the lens to give me about a 50 millimeter focal length, which gives me the natural perspective. And now I'm going to take the scene and I'm going to use a uh, a method by which I work across the image in a set of five, drop down, come across a series of five, drop down, and then come across as a series of five. Now each image was overlapped slightly, so Photoshop has something to work on to be able to stitch those images together. And the way I do this visually is to look at something that's in the right hand part of the viewfinder when I'm working from left to right, look at the image on the right hand side then move the camera until that has moved over to the left hand side take the next shot and then look what's on the right hand side bring that over to the left hand side and take the shot etc so that i've got an overlap and the same when i'm going top to bottom i find something that's at the bottom of the image and i move that to the top for the next frame so i've got consistency over the whole metering so let me take those 15 images now and then we'll put them into photoshop and stitch them as a panorama and then we can crop it to however we need so let me take those 15 images first of all. So there I've got the 15 images, which I will now import into Photoshop and we'll use the uh, Panorama Merge facility and make them into one image. One of the other advantages of this method is that we're getting lower noise. Because we're stacking the images uh, to give me five images in a line, we've got 20 megapixel uh, horizontal and something like 12 megapixel vertical resolution. 
When we scale that back to our standard size in Photoshop, obviously the noise is reduced as well, so it gives us a noise advantage if we want those larger images. Let's import those into Photoshop and have a look at the final result. Begin by selecting File, then Automate and Photo Merge from the Photoshop menu. Now click on Browse and navigate to the menu where your images are kept. Select all the images and press OK. Select the Reposition option from the Layout and then click OK. Dependent on the power of your PC, it might take several minutes for the process to complete, but when it does, you should be seeing something like this on the screen. You can now use any filter, such as a camera raw filter, to adjust the colour, saturation, intensity, etc. of the image you've got. Here in camera raw, I'm adjusting saturation, sharpness, and other parameters that I think would improve the image quality. Finally, reducing the output size to a standard dimension, so I'm using 4000 as the width for this particular image. So here's the final image on screen, reduced down to 4000 pixels wide, giving us the noise advantage because our, that too has been compressed. So there we are, that's my method for creating a stitch panorama, giving you a natural perspective with a wider field of view compared to your standard wide angle shot. So here's a wide angle shot at 17 millimeters compared to our matrix of five by three uh, captured in a three to two aspect ratio. Now, one other advantage of this method is if you can't get far enough back to get everything in the frame that you're trying to capture. The image on screen now we are captured in a local cemetery and this particular statue, I wanted to get the whole of it in focus, but unfortunately I couldn't get far enough back with the lens that I had because there was a wall in the way. So the way around this was to capture again as a matrix. Using a, something like a four to three matrix in this particular instance, I was able to capture the whole of the sequence and then stitch together again in Photoshop to give me that one image. Now there is an advantage in this as well, it means you can use longer focus lenses to give you the effect of a wider angle with a shallower depth of field. Something that they call the Brenizer effect, if you've actually seen that term used before. It's a method used by uh, Ray Brenizer to create uh, stunning wedding pictures that he has a bride and groom in a larger vista uh, with a shallower depth of field than you can get with your standard lenses. So it's called the Brenizer effect if you wanted to research that. But I use a similar matrix method for both my landscape and for uh, images that I can't get into shot with the one single shot. Hope you found that useful. If you're new or viewer to the channel, please do subscribe, click the notification icon, and you'll be receiving an email when I upload any new videos to the channel. Also, check out my photographic blog. You'll find a link to that in the video description below. So more than that, it's a newsletter with more technical information, which I publish on a fortnightly basis. So please do check, again, check that out. Again, there'll be a link in the description below. So until the next video, thanks very much for watching. Please do take care, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Goodbye for now.